I am coming to you from the outskirts of Chicago. Brad and his wife have always been talking about doing a koi pond. Ready, buddy? Do they like to fight? Hey, buddy, oh. you're sitting on your tail. Go on now. <laughs> hey, good morning, everybody. I'm the Pond Professor here. I am coming to you from the outskirts of Chicago. Absolutely spectacular property, and I'm going to show you around this place because it is absolutely stunning. So we have Brent here from the Pond Beyond. He is going to be working with me along with his entire team. Brad's got some very cool goats out here. In fact, he actually purchased a few of those goats from my wife, Helen, many, many years ago. So what we're doing right now is we're getting ready to start out on this water feature. Let me show you what we're going to be doing here. This is what we have. I came out and met with them this past winter. Brad and his wife have always been talking about doing a koi pond. In fact, he used to breed and sell koi at one point, but he was never happy with this courtyard area. So he's kind of been holding off on doing anything. So what we want to try to do is create a very unique entry into this beautiful home. And we want to have it highly visible from all different windows and things like that. This is actually his office. So the idea right now is to rip out the walkway, do the koi pond through this area, have a deep section kind of over here visible from the window and then over on this side this is where we'll kind of tuck that walkway so we're going to rip out this existing walkway that's here very very formal brad is not a formal guy he has never really liked this type of a look so we're going to rip that entire thing out we also want to have some stack slate spheres tucked in this corner and we're going to do a wetland filter want to try to figure out if we can elevate this just a little bit so we can get a small waterfall coming in but i want to create a little bit of interest visual interest as well as auditory and then we're going to reconfigure this walkway to kind of come around and possibly have water on both sides at one point and then tuck it all the way up against the wall. Our pumps, as of right now, I'm guessing they're gonna go in this corner just because we have easy access to our power supply over in this section. It is gonna be a unique situation. You could tell by the proximity of the two walls here. It is relatively tight. So we're gonna be coming in and digging everything out. We're gonna reutilize all the soil on site. Now, normally I would be building up all the soil over here to create a large waterfall. Not really gonna work here. And it's just because of the elevation of the foundation of the home, layout, access, and things like that. We're going to haul all the soil to the back part of the property. It is going to be all the way out and about around the far corner of the house where he is kind of changing some grades and building some walkways and things like that. So we're going to start staging everything and we're going to start shuffling everything in to this brand new water feature. Yeah, that one. always in the way though. I'm about to go back in here and hit this thing. Let's give it to the goat. Ready, buddy? Don't bite my fingers. Hold on. Okay, hold on a second. I know I wired it shut. Oh, you guys want to see it get let go? Yeah, we're dumping with a creek for a uh, <laughs> <laughs> Come one, come all <laughs> to the beaver show. <laughs> no, don't go that side, I might bite you. Well, I'm good, I know what to do. Did you get bit? Yeah. Did I get bit? <laughs> Why don't you turn him towards the, the creek? Oh, he's going the wrong way. Flip. See, now I'm on the right side. <laughs> God, come on. Oh yeah, they're very, very aggressive. It's like the only thing that makes me nervous is beavers. Like nothing else I let go, that, but these guys. Yeah. They bother me. They like to fight. Yeah, right, get your foot in there. Figure it so out. When you walk in the creek, he'll chase you. You're sitting on your tail. They always do that, it's so cute. Hey buddy, Ooh. you're sitting on your tail, go. Go on now. Yeah, just follow me, beaver. See how fast old oh, man can climb oh, trees. He's gonna go out the side there. Okay. Alright. Yep. Follow Brad. We 
remove the existing walkway. We're going to be accentuating some of these little peninsulas with more rock work and everything. I want to have a deep section over in this corner that's visible from the patio as well as from his office. Our biggest challenge is going to be the figuring out the wetland filter, how that's going to kind of tie into this corner because we can't have it come too far out this way just because of the proximity of the edge of the building there. And then we still have to have this walkway going through. My thought for the walkway is we're going to come down and I'd like to have almost like stepping stones or almost a bridge going across this section so we have water on both sides. And then once we get to this little peninsula, we'll just have a series of overhanging rocks, kind of a cantilevered edge. So this would kind of create a nice natural little seating area. And then I think we're going to have stepping stones again going back over towards that stupid of the house try to tuck the pumps in this one little corner so i might have to reconfigure this a little bit we may have to belly this out a little bit more in this section but we have a good starting point so what i want to try to do right now is just start excavation because we have to move all the soil to the far other side of the property our thought originally was to run the skid steer back and forth but we're just going to make a mess we're going to tear stuff up so what we're trying to do right now they're going to bring the dump trailer in with the truck and we'll just kind of back the truck all the way through here and then that way, as Brent is doing the excavation, he can just dump it right into the dump trailer, minimize some of our trips going back and forth, which will preserve some of the turf grass. The excavation is going to be a little slower today. It is because of this. <laughs> we got a tight, tight spot. Brent has got to be a contortionist over there to be able to excavate, spin, and dump all the excess soil. The excavation is complete. We are cutting the fabric to go inside. We have our deep zone for overwintering the fish. We have a couple of these little bump outs which are gonna accept some larger boulders. And then we have to reconfigure that walkway coming through. It's gonna be a little bit of a challenge along with that wetland filter. We're gonna have to get the liner in, all of our majority of the rocks before we start excavation over here. Otherwise we're gonna block ourselves. First layer of geotextile down. We have our rubber liner going in place, and then we have the heavy duty rock pad, which is all the way at the far end. We're gonna pull into position. As soon as Brett's done, he's getting all the folds out. You see what he's doing? He's carefully taking his time, just kind of folding those and putting them down in place. It makes for an easier time actually trimming up the liner. So it just holds everything into position. Then we cover it up with that heavy duty rock pad, and it just locks everything in place, and it's not gonna be moving around on us. You can see how he's stepping down at the very, very bottom, at the very deepest part of the excavation. He's making sure that there's no tension on the liner pulling all the slack out and then working its way up and out so when we start doing our stone work you want to be very conscious of starting the rock work down on the bottom if you started doing rock work on the top and then do stuff down on the bottom you could get like a very taut liner which could cause problems so this is an open corner void underneath and it's there to void so if we just set rock here it's going to tension this liner all the way around yep so that's why we take time doing that exactly for reasons like that making nice progress smaller boulders going down in the bottom that's a granite type stone so it's more rounded then we're going to transition our way up to more of the weathered limestone up on the top edge which has got a lot more of the character then we have those big flat slabs that are going to come across this edge to this walkway that's going to tie in to the existing stoop over here so we want to have a pathway but we want it to be somewhat rustic we're going to have to take a little bit of time carefully to make sure that all this is locked in place in order to make that function properly from a functional standpoint as well as an aesthetic standpoint making great progress on the project here. We got some of these stepping stones in, which is a little bit more time consuming just because you have to have them level at the right elevation. They also have to be stable. So we're going through the process of kind of locking everything into place. Our next steps will be to come underneath 
these rocks to solidify that base and use some of the expanding polyurethane foam. So that's the material that we use for waterfalls and things like that. But what it will do is it'll fill all the void spaces. It'll lock the small gravel pieces and rocks in place so it all works as one cohesive unit. It's going to help to increase the stability. We will also continue by placing some of the larger rocks in and around those as well as underneath. So you can see we just have some of these rocks are sitting on a couple pedestals right now. We'll continue filling all those voids which will solidify everything a little bit more. And then we have more rocks coming in. We're going to continue working our way around the outside perimeter. Once we get all the rock inside we'll be able to hook up our pump, our plumbing, get our lights in position and then we could start excavation on the wetland filter. Now we can't really do that section until we get everything done on the inside because it'll block off all of our access with the excavator. Once that is completed with the big stone then we could have the excavator start to dig that out. While he's doing that we can take our time to get all these other pieces into position, running the pumps, the plumbing, the lighting, etc. Just dropped in the other large piece of ledge rock over here on this back side. Kind of do a little bit of a cantilever type of a setup, allowing fish to go underneath there, kind of escape the heat of the day as well as any potential predators. So what we're going to do is actually remove this particular step, put in another flat piece of this outcropping, this ledge rock in here, and it will sit kind of right where these levels are at and kind of bridge this little gap. So then as we do our walkway coming through from the main area over here, it'll twist and turn its way, come across this rock, and then you'll have almost like this big, nice landing area you'll hop across to this lone stone right here which we need to leave in position we don't want to do ledge rock over here because we have our skimmer in place and then from here we'll hop up to the other natural rock and then up to the landing up on top we still have that nice open area down here on the bottom for, for fish and later on today we are going to be getting ready for the wetland filter that will be installed over on this back side so we will have a separate rubber membrane going in this section it'll overlap on this back edge over here and we're gonna have a water Waterfall kind of coming through this craggy piece over here as well as behind this one we left a little bit of a joint over here and that's going to allow us to have that little horsetail type of an effect these waterfalls are not giant by any means and it's just because of the elevation and everything that we have to work with here so I'm always trying to figure stuff out I want to have proper dissolved oxygen I want to have the proper flow rate going through but I also want to make it aesthetically pleasing and to fit into the landscape and to have a massive waterfall over here would be very difficult to pull off so I'm always looking at all these different design parameters when we're putting products together. You can see some of our equipment back over here, our snorkel centipede and all that stuff. That is overkill for this particular project from a filtration standpoint. The reason we're doing it, I mentioned it briefly earlier, Brad is a koi fanatic, so he wants to make sure that he has plenty of filtration for adding koi to the pond. Again, it's not a massive, massive pond, so the fish that he has in here will probably be very high quality, so we want to make sure we have adequate filtration for this particular project. So our next steps, we're going to have to regrade some things over in here, probably do a little bit of a wall back over on this side, keep soil away from the home build up elevation a little bit over on here and you could definitely see as I kind of back myself down the slope over here by the time I get to this point this has to stay up high <laughs> we're probably at least 18 inches below water level at this point here so we're gonna need to take some of the spoils that we dig out we're gonna have to build this area up we may use some of these larger rocks and things like that to kind of re retain all of this after talking with them yesterday most of their guests friends family etc come in through the other side of the house where they have access off of their driveway. So this is actually gonna be kind of just a hidden little cove area, which is very, very cool. 